you know, I stepped into Neve, into yeshiva, and heard so many statements about, like, Judaism says this about women, and Judaism says that, and they were said with such certainty that they didn't really leave any room for questioning. And yet, every once in a while, I would hear the a kind of, like, different idea that would pop up and then it would just disappear, one here, one there, one there, but I never saw them woven together into a, into a framework unto themselves. And it was then during the course of my learning that I came upon, actually learning about Purim, that I came upon this teaching of the Ari, where he called the Miyuta Yareach, where he presents this model of the seven stages of feminine development that he says is a universal pattern of the feminine life cycle in every form, like woman in relation to man, the inner feminine, or really all of creation is feminine in relation to Hashem. And, um, and that journey moves from diminishment into fullness of stature. And the last stage, which is the messianic stage, that we're, we, when we all say Mashiach now, like what are we really talking about? So he says that we're talking about a stage where that is the complete tikkun of the masculine and feminine, where they meet panim pa panim, shave legamre, face to face and completely equal. And I was like, whoa, this is the Ari. It sounds like a like a feminist treatise. Like whoa. And so that really then inspired me to look more deeply into what he was saying and to try to understand how his ideas applied to, to real life, to, to people's lives, to women's lives, to women and men's lives, and also to just understand how those ideas then are unpacked in later generations and other rabbinic writings. So that's, that, was, that was how the whole um, journey began. And, and I've taught the material to classes. That's where it really gets enriched where when I'm teaching in a class and people are sharing their personal experiences and how it relates or doesn't relate and what's missing and it you know kind of forces an unpacking of the material even still more so uh, so I, I I do feel that it holds a re it's a real light in terms of understanding who we are, where we are now, why things were the way they were, and how that was right for those stages. And just like a, you know, a child that goes through various developmental stages, and each stage, it's like something happens there that's critical, like a certain growth and a certain consciousness that's acquired. So just like they teach that if a child walks before it crawls, that there's certain wiring that doesn't happen in the system and that they're, you know, it's a, they're debilitated later in life. So also the, the you know, the, the earlier stages where there's greater disparity between the, the feminine is more diminished, those aren't mistakes or errors or imperfections. There is something that is happening to he and she in that process that makes it possible for her to come into her fullness of stature and somehow for it to work, for the, for the union to deepen and, um, and, and all that. So, so it helped, I just want to say one thing, <laughs> that it helped me to not only feel like um, hopeful and, and, and a vision of, of what is going to be, what's promised to be and where we're headed. But it also helped me to feel more at peace with what was and what had been and to feel the purposefulness of that, that is also part of the design. So really, I mean, each one of these seven stages, when you unpack them, you can kind of get a sense of how, oh, that's how, that is how it was at different stages of history or whatever. And it seems like that we now are in more or less around stage four, where the feminine is coming into what's called her mochin, her, her intellectual maturity. And, you know, I know that in my parents' days, it was more like kind of intellect was more the masculine, abstract intellect at least, was more the masculine realm. And the feminine was more like kind of took care of all the emotional kind of happenings and social, you know, issues in the in the home and now there is an idea that at this stage the feminine is coming into her intellectual maturity and so there is more of a meeting of minds as well as of hearts mm -hmm. between masculine and feminine in these days and so but again even though the feminine when the feminine comes into her intellectual maturity it's not 
that she thinks like him. She brings her kind of feminine sensibilities into that. And, um, and so I know like even, like I have a number of friends of mine who are lawyers who kind of came in to the trade when, when the world opened up to kind of women in more advanced professions. And they, uh, they say that you know, women's approach to law is actually by and large quite different from men's and that they're contributing something that is important and in some ways they're, they're even more effective than men are in approaching certain issues of law. So I think that um, it applies on a professional level in terms of women as they come into their intellectual maturity, kind of participating more freely in those kinds of those aspects of life and the world. But I think that it also is a deepening of, of, of intimacy between a couple, with, even within a couple, of a, of a he and a she, that more of them is overlapping now and more of each is able to be. I always say that really um, relationship, the, the zivug, the union of relationship, is essentially happens on the level of da'at of knowing, like it says, an Adam knew Chava, Eve, and they were as one flesh. So really, the, the union is really a seeing and being seen, knowing and being known. And so as the feminine comes into her intellectual maturity, so there's a whole other increment of meeting that now can happen between he and her, and a deepening of intimacy, and a deepening of seeing and being seen. So I think that the um, the, that that stage of feminine development it has it makes a difference on the socio-cultural level, but it also makes a difference on just the deepening of intimacy within a couple.